Hi everyone, it's Jessica again and welcome to Critic. Lactic acidosis is the most common form of acidosis and it could indicate life-threatening medical conditions that require fast action on your part. This short video teaches you how to approach the patient with elevated lactate levels. Let's go. Elevated serum lactate levels are strongly correlated with poor clinical outcome, especially in patients with sepsis or shock. Traditionally, we interpret lactate as a biological marker of tissue hypoxia caused by inadequate oxygen delivery. It's a bit more complicated than that though. Let's go back to high school for a second to see how lactate is formed. For our energy production, glucose is broken down into pyruvate through a process we call glycolysis. Pyruvate metabolism can follow two routes. Under aerobic conditions, pyruvate is converted into acetyl coenzyme A in the mitochondria, which is the main input for the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle, combined with oxidative phosphorylation, is our main source of energy production. The end result is 36 ATP, but as mentioned, it requires oxygen. Pyruvate can also be converted into lactate, which does not require oxygen, but only produces 2 ATP. Lactate is then cleared primarily by the liver and some by the kidneys. So this gives us four main reasons for elevated lactate levels and a few nice to know ones which I'll get back to later. The first and most important one is tissue hypoxia. If oxygen is insufficient, pyruvate will not enter the Krebs cycle, but it will be converted into lactate. Common and important examples of tissue hypoxia are any type of shock, sepsis, ischemia, never forget bowel ischemia, severe hypoxemia, severe anemia, never forget hemorrhage, and carbon monoxide poisoning. The second reason is impaired lactate clearance. Once lactate is formed, it needs to be cleared by the body. If lactate clearance is impaired, it could also be a cause of elevated lactate levels, even if production itself is normal. So think liver or renal impairment. The third reason is mitochondrial dysfunction. You can have all the oxygen you want, but if the mitochondria don't function properly, the accumulated pyruvate will follow the lactate pathway. The most common cause for mitochondrial dysfunction is drug or toxin related. Notable ones are metformin, by interfering with oxidative phosphorylation as well as suppression of hepatic gluconeogenesis, salicylates, propofol, cyanide, and toxic alcohols, as mentioned in my video on metabolic acidosis, all by interfering with oxidative phosphorylation. The fourth reason is increased glycolytic flux. If there is something that causes glucose to be rapidly converted into pyruvate, your mitochondria won't be able to keep up with the demand, and so the lactate pathway is chosen. Examples are excessive physical activity in, for instance, extreme sports and seizures, and adrenergic stimulation, especially beta-adrenergic stimulation, salbutamol, but some say all adrenergic activation can cause elevated lactate levels, so also in sepsis, without the need for tissue hypoxia. I highly recommend listening to Dr. Merrick's podcast on this, link in the description. The take-home message is that lactate is not necessarily a marker of inadequate tissue oxygenation, but it should be regarded as a marker for severe stress or illness. Let's quickly mention the nice to know ones. Thiamine deficiency. You need thiamine or vitamin B1 for the entry of pyruvate into the Krebs cycle. Excessive alcohol intake. Alcohol metabolism produces NADH, which is needed for the conversion of pyruvate into lactate. Mitochondrial disease. There are a couple of extremely rare congenital mitochondrial diseases that for now obvious reasons cause elevated lactate levels. Traditionally, lactic acidosis is subdivided into type A, with tissue hypoxia, and type B, without. Now you know the causes. So how do we implement this in clinical practice? Normal lactate levels are between 0 and 1 millimoles per liter. Remember the following. When lactate is above 2, start thinking. When lactate is above 4, start worrying. Your main focus should be on figuring out if this lactate could be caused by tissue hypoxia. When in doubt, act as if it is. This means that you should ask yourself the following questions. First, is enough oxygen being delivered to the organs? This requires the blood to have an adequate oxygen content. 
The content of oxygen in blood is determined by how much hemoglobin the body has and how much oxygen is bound to it, i.e. the oxygen saturation, plus the arterial pressure of oxygen, i.e. how much oxygen is dissolved in blood. It also requires the blood to actually reach the organs, meaning you'd need an adequate cardiac output and no stenosis or constriction in the blood vessels. Determining oxygen content is pretty easy. Get an arterial blood gas and check hemoglobin levels. Determining cardiac output is a bit more difficult. If you're planning on getting into an emergency field, I'd highly recommend taking an ultrasound course early in your residency. It's a lot of fun and it can help you greatly in cases like these. Let me know if you'd be interested in a video on assessing fluid responsiveness. Spoiler alert though, it's pretty hard to adequately predict which patient is fluid responsive and which one is not, but I digress. How can I improve oxygen delivery? Think, giving supplemental oxygen, giving packed cells, and improving cardiac output by giving a fluid challenge or anotropes. Second, is oxygen being utilized by the organs? As mentioned before, there are a few reasons why mitochondrial dysfunction could occur. Go through these in your head, check meds and toxins. And third, is lactate clearance adequate? In other words, do I have liver or renal impairment? When you've checked all these off, take a deep breath and work out the other causes. Note that I haven't mentioned giving bicarb for the acidosis. The reason for this is that this is a controversial topic and it should not be an automatic response. In lactic acidosis specifically, there is no evidence that bicarb improves outcome, but there are reasons to believe that bicarb administration results in increased carbon dioxide production and decreased serum ionized calcium, which may contribute to decreased ventricular and vascular contractility. So don't. That's all on lactate for now. Let me know what you think about this video, share it if you liked it, and if you're interested in more, don't forget to subscribe.